Hi everyone, this is Robert Christensen. This is the five mistakes people make while whiteboarding and how to avoid them. Mistake number one, that is erasing too soon. See that? I used my finger and I tried to erase to the too soon. I made a big old smudge. That's because I didn't let the ink in the pen dry before I tried to erase it with my finger. I left a smudge. And what ends up happening is you come back up here and you end up having to kind of redo it, redo it, and you get a messy board. So the idea here is, is to let the ink dry so that you can uh, erase it without leaving a smudge. That typically is only like three seconds. So if I go up here, erase to soon, one, two, three, and I come back here and I can get rid of the soon just like that. And just say, soon. All right, here's number two of the five things people make mistakes and how to avoid them. The second one is, is getting in the way, just standing in the way of your own board, right? What's the point of being able to communicate effectively in a live setting if you're in the way of the board? So what you need to do is step aside, right? So step aside so that people can read what you're doing and you're not talking into the wall trying to communicate this direction while you're talking. And this happens so frequently because people are more concerned about what they're writing instead of looking at the people who they're trying to communicate to. All right, number three of the mistakes people make while whiteboarding and how to avoid them would be writing straight, or let's just say not writing straight would be the mistake. If you are putting stuff on the wall here, on the board, basically you're writing on a wall, and it's not straight, your communication, the sub message that is going out to people is that it's a messy board, it's not organized, and it's not being communicated effectively. What you wanna do is write straight, unless you intend it to be off angle, such as like on a wheel or something like that, or you're drawing the things out at angles, and that's very important, right? You can get a nice board looking at that. However, writing straight is critical and the way that you write straight is you have to have stability. We use this called a pinky post, okay? So pinky post allows you to write and to stabilize your hand as you go across. You want your arm to be at a right angle and as you move across here. The problem is, is people will start writing and then let it trail off that way. You don't wanna do that. If you step back and look at your board and you see that things aren't uh, you know, pretty aligned, right? It doesn't have to be like measured perfectly. However, it's good to have straight writing. All right, the fourth problem people have while doing uh, whiteboarding is writing too small. They're not putting the font, the font on the whiteboard, the size of the font, appropriate to the room. The room is the most important. If you're in a little teeny conference room, I have a little office here in my house where I'm doing this. So I, I, you know, if there's someone sitting right here, I can do my, what we call the smallest font, which is one finger size, so right? So people will write small, it's one finger size there, see that? Okay, but when you go up to a little conference room and you may have five, six people in there, seven people in the conference room, you're gonna need to go to the medium size, which is two fingers, okay? And medium size lets you communicate to the people in the room, they'll be able to see it. But sometimes you're in a much bigger conference room, you may have 20 people in there, maybe even more, right? And so you're gonna need to go to a large font all right, and the large font is gonna be three fingers or bigger, all right? But you can start with those three. One, small font, medium font, large font. Here's the fifth mistake most people make while whiteboarding and how to avoid it. That is, they rush, they go too fast. They're talking and writing at the same time, right? And they're just, doing stuff so quick and you can't read their writing because they're going too fast. They don't have good, uh, good penmanship to keep up with their thinking, they're talking and they're drawing things like this and you're expecting to make that out you know, five minutes later. The trick here with good whiteboarding, specifically when you're in trying to get your, your um, message across to people is to slow down. People want you to succeed if you're up at the board and kind of putting a little risk that your idea may not go over well with people in the room. They want you to win. Everybody wants you to win, okay? So the thing is, is to slow down and be intentional with what you write. Back away, step off, 
and just let people take it in and then wait so that they can interject and add to it. They may have new ideas that you haven't thought about as you guys are joining together to iterate and to solve problems that you didn't, that you had to have a community together to solve for. All right. I'm Robert Christensen. These are the five mistakes most people make while whiteboarding. This is brought to you by Palace Pins. This is this pin that I've been using right now. Here's the great thing about Palace Pins. They have a replaceable cartridge. You don't have to carry around a big ink wells or replaceable things and put ink back in some, or more importantly, be stuck with the crappy pins that are at some location. Bring your own pins. Number one rule that I always follow when I whiteboard and in a situation, and if I need a new cartridge, I put the new one in. And by the way, they are 50% less plastic than any of those other ones that you see that never work anyways. Bring your own stuff. Have your right tools ready to go. This is Palace Pens. All right, take care. Bye.